Welcome to Spirit of Life. We're going to go to a program right now, and I, I believe that's going to be the best program you've ever seen and heard. So this is going to be a great message for you. I believe it'll change your life. So we're going to be right back after this. We want to pray with you. He knows every detail. Holy Spirit, we have to understand who He is, how He speaks to us, when He speaks to us, what His voice sounds like. You know, if, if, if our, our spirit is condemning us, is that the Holy Spirit or is it my spirit? Some people think, I feel really condemned. Holy Spirit will never condemn you. You know what condemns you? Your own spirit. Your own inner man that's born again will tell you something's wrong on the inside. If you're honest, he will get, you will feel uneasy inside there and say, you know, this is something wrong here. And he'll tell you. And so, so we have to fellowship with, with the spirit that God put in us. So through constant prayer, Talking to the Spirit of God, praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues, God will give you details for your life. He'll show you, specifically catered for you. But if you don't do this, you'll continually walk in the in the what we call the, the, the you know the permissive will of God. And in the permissive will of God, you can get into a lot of trouble. Now, you're not going against God, but you're kind of like, you know, they're like a sitting duck for the enemy. Just doing whatever you want to do. There is this, there's, the, there's the perfect will of God, and the perfect will of God, the devil cannot get to you. He cannot get to you. He's looking at you. He's right there, but he can't get to you. He that dwells in secret the place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my God, my rock, my salvation. And whom shall I fear? Yeah. And you'll, you'll, you'll understand Psalm 91. Yeah. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it wouldn't come near you. Only with your own eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When you're with the shepherd and you're in his perfect will, you're not going to want a, lot, a whole lot of things. He's here to lead, to guide, to, to, to amplify, it says in verse 1, Psalm 23, he will lead, guide, and feed you. Wow. That means every supply you need will be met. Your, 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 your car payment will be there. If you eat your car payment, then it's not God's fault. Right. Your, your rent or whatever it is you have to you, you, you keep, if you, if you take that money and you, and you spend foolishly, then whose fault is it? It's not the devil's fault. It's not God. It's you. Be responsible. Stop blaming the devil for what you're doing. Amen. Amen. And quit giving the devil a lot of power in your life by blaming him for something that you're doing. So we look at that. We look at this, you know, we, 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 and then when you, if you look at it from your eyes, you think, oh, look at the devil. He's so powerful. He can just come in here, slap me around in my bed, in my couch. Wake me up at night, throw, throw my covers on the floor, and you know, kick me, <laughs> tells me you're going to kill me, assaults me, and then goes and eats in my kitchen. <laughs> Ties up my wife. <laughs> kicks my kid around. I mean, you know, like, a, 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 you know, ooh, look at the devil. But first of all, we, we, we let him in sometimes. There you are sitting, watching the hockey game, Eating chips, and he's sitting right there with you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then there's a service coming on over here. Well, enjoy life, but that 
could be the case, maybe not. If not, then maybe you need to look at it. Okay, so God has different, different things, you know, for us. He has details for every one of our lives. For instance, if God didn't want us to marry a certain person, say, for instance, in this church we have, uh, you know, four guys want to marry one woman. Well, who's, who's that person supposed to marry? He can't marry all of them, and they all say, oh, she's for me. Right? And everybody wants that one job that's been, that's, uh, uh, you know, that one job there in the office. Everybody wants that one job, and they're all vying for that one job. And, 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 and that person, somebody got the job. Now you're mad because you thought it was your job. Now you're holding a resentment. In fact, God didn't want you in that office in the first place. <laughs> I'm just trying to play the devil's advocate in, in some way, you know, to help you think, you know. And then you get mad because, first of all, are you supposed to be in that office? You, should, you know, like, question yourself. Am I, am I actually in the right place? You know, so, uh, so in the general will of God, God wants everybody to have a job. He wants us to ha- earn a living. It's in the scriptures. In the New Testament, God wants everybody to have a job, work, to labor. But what kind of job should I have? Well, sometimes, you know, God does give us a choice in some areas. For some people, he will say no to you. He'll say, you need to go over here. I want you here. I don't want you to go and do this. I, you know, say, for instance, for myself, my wife, God told us, this occupation, working in the world is not for you. You need to go work in the church. So that's what we did. It sure didn't look like God's will, even, even still today at times. Especially when I want a big motorboat and go fishing on Sunday. Well, it's coming. It's coming. So, God wants all of us to be healthy. And yet, some are not healthy. Some people don't have any money, yet, God wants everyone to have money. God wants us to not, not to be lonely, and yet there's people lonely. <laughs> Even in marriages. If you think out there, I want to tell you guys who are married right now, if you think you're, you're going to get married and it'll all be over, you'll never be lonely again, you've got something coming to you. You know what? Uh, seriously, uh, if, if, you know, I, I don't get lonely with my wife because she tells me. You know, start thinking about it. I don't get lonely ever. Because we do have a dog now. <laughs> a dog, a man's best friend. I get lonely when I have to watch the hockey games by myself. Go to the ball game and come back to the baseball game. But anyway, God wants all of us to have victory in life. And yet people are going from one defeat to another defeat. Why is that? There's a reason for it. Hmm? And uh, they want us, God wants us to have happy marriages, and yet there's some people that are not happy in their marriage. So there, 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 there's, there's questions that we need to ask yourself, and so I'm, I'm trying to research, research with you guys this morning to, to figure these things out, you know. So God's will... His perfect will, his, his idea in your life is found in the scriptures. Whatever the calling is in your life, whatever he wants you to do, uh, there's a place for you, there's a right job, career for you, there's activities, your involvement in life is all God wants to lead you to it. So, this, so God has a design, he has designed this thing, he has a, he has a purpose for it, a reason for it, and he's made this determination for us even before we were born. God has already made the plan already. He's already said, this is what I want my child to do. I, I, I've known other people that said, you know, God's, you know, Jesus spoke to them and said, you know, I didn't, first of all, you know, you were pastoring for those many years. I didn't, I didn't really want you to pastor. That's not, you know, you're doing something for me, but that's not what I want you to do. 
And there's people, I've, Brother Hagin told us, and other, we've seen this, that people, uh, Jesus said to him, and one of those things, there's many, minist- many of my ministers, he said, who have never been in my perfect will, have died early because they've never been in my will. But they were ministers. So, you know, we need to find a will, the will of God. So when bad things happen, who's responsible? As we said, is, it, is God doing that? Is, is the devil? Who, what's going on? Do I make, did I do that? Here's what Jesus said, John 10.10. 10. He says the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. So is any stealing going on, any robbing going on, any killing going on, any destruction? He said that's all, the devil's doing that. He's doing all that stuff. But Jesus said, I've come that you, that you, might, find, that you might have life the, 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 here's the, the, the New Living says, the thief's purpose is to steal, to kill and destroy. My purpose is to give, give them a rich and satisfying life. So we should all seek for a rich and satisfying life. If you're not satisfied right now, ask yourself, why am I not satisfied? Am I just to being, is it a simply just a, 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 you know, ungrateful heart, or am I just not supposed to be, am I not doing, am I not in the right place? Hmm? Jesus came to do, undo the works of the devil, he says. And the Amplified in John 3, 8, he says, the reason the Son of God was made manifest was to destroy, undo the work, or uh, uh, destroy, and loosen, and dissolve the works of the devil. So he came that he would Loose you from all the stuff that's going on when, when we're in his will. If there's any destruction, killing, pain, and all that stuff going on, it's not God. In reference to our health, in our good health, John, uh, 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 you know, Peter said, the Apostle Peter, I mean, Luke is writing Book of Acts, but he's quoting with the preaching of Peter. Peter is preaching, he said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who and about doing good. God is about, you know, the scripture says, God is good. For God was with him. So oppression is not of God. If you're oppressed this morning and feel low, well, that's not really of God. There's something going on there. If it's a physical thing, let's get that fixed up. We'll get you some medicine. Pray for you and believe God to get healed. Or if you can receive right away, let's receive right away. So there's evil influences going on in life. The enemy can get a hold of people, get them off track, and really get them into disobedience. Because he'll show you things, you know what, hey, you know, you could have had this. You shouldn't have done that, you could have had that. If you just take a shortcut here, you could get this. He's really pulling you in. The devil works behind activities and, and just gets into man's steps and, and get him off course. Get him off course and just a little bit at a time. And finally, he's way over here off course. Here's what the 2 Timothy 2, 25, 26, the New Living Translation says. Telling a pastor this to the people of God in the, in the church there. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change people's hearts. They will learn, learn the truth. They will come to their senses and escape the devil's trap. For they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. So, God's word tells us that there's some Christians that got a hold of some Christians. or I mean, there's, the devil got a hold of some Christians. And, he's, and he, they're doing the devil's work. You don't believe me? Look at the scripture. They don't know. If you don't know the will of God, how could you, how could you not know? If you don't know the will of God, how could you not know you're being deceived? It's the word of God, the truth. John 17, 17 says the truth makes, gives you that revelation. The truth is God, God's word is true. Was it John 8, uh, John chapter 8, 40, uh, something there? He says that uh, 
God's word is truth, and the truth will set you free. So, there, so ask yourself, am I being deceived in some area through my senses? Because I, I'm, you know, I, I, you know, basically, you know, if you're honest, sometimes we get selfish about things. We want the quick and easy way. So there are some people need to come to their senses there, according to the scripture. Jesus said, Peter, the apostle Peter himself, now he wrote, Acts, uh, he, he was speaking in Acts 10.38, but Jesus said Peter was influenced by Satan himself. He's an apostle there, over there. He's, he's being trained. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples. This is in Mark 8.33. <clears throat> he reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeking the things rarely from human point of view, not from God's, from God's, God's point of view. So, right, right then you see here, there's two perspectives. Human point of view can't see God. They, 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 try to, they try to determine God's will in their own mind. We have to use our mind to figure out what the will of God is, not in our, in our own mind without the will of God. So if you're trying to figure out the will of God with your own mind, not uh, using the word of God, you're not going to find it. Because it'll, it'll make sense to you, all right, because you're, 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 you're viewing things from a human standpoint. So, Peter, Paul said, Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, 13, he said, but I fear somehow... Your pure, undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. So, I mean, there's a concern here. I, I believe God is, God's spirit is concerned. I mean, he has a concern. He, God, the Bible says he's concerned for us. Uh, it's a scripture, uh, Psalm 38, 8. God God will take care of everything you know, in your life that concerns you. He's, he's gonna, if you give yourself over to God, whatever you're concerned about, he's going to take care of that. So in this scripture, he says that uh, Eve was deceived. What does deceived mean? What does deceived mean besides his Description, decide, deceive, lie to. Tricked? What else? Fooled? I know you're going to college. I'm glad you went to college. <laughs> I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad. That's good. He's got, he's got it. Because, you know, you could get fooled. How could you be so foolish? Some people say, how could you, how could you be so foolish? And yet, you know, aren't you a Christian? Yeah, apparently I'm not informed enough. But anyway, so here's, here's uh, what he says, you know. He's telling the Corinthians, you know, uh, just like Eve was, you Corinthians can be deceived and be foolish by the cunning ways of the, of the serpent, and the serpent is the devil. Like, he's got ways. He knows exactly how to pull your cords and how to push you and making the decision. He's watching you all the time, and how to get you back off course, he just put the same buttons again. I know how to get that person mad. I'll make, him, make her think that she's mad at him over here or her, that they're talking about her, and let's just have something happen here so that it'll confirm it in your mind. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, so you see what happens. You know, people fig- try to figure out God by just in their own mind. So Satan has power, evidently, to influence people and, and the world around us, the scripture says in 1 John 5, 19 and 20, here, we know that we are the children of God and that the whole world around us is under the control of the evil one. The whole world. You mean to say the whole world is controlled? You know, like, it's hard to believe eh, in your own mind. You mean, that, you mean this whole world is being controlled by the evil one? Well, God, he, he's the God of this world. 
It says in this scripture, 1 John 5, 19 and 20, that the whole world is, is, is under the sway or influence and control of the evil one. If you're going to live in this world without the will of God, without understanding the will of God, you'll just come under the same sway. Do the same thing. Feel the same way about the devil. Feel the same way about hell. Feel the same way about sin. Feel the same way about serving God. Feel the same way about going. You just feel the same way. Everybody else says, ah, we don't need to go to church. Let's have some fun. Let's go for a picnic today. We don't want to sit in that stuffy church. This is a pastor Roma. Well, watch him online when we can chat. He's online, isn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so you know, you have, you have this. So we need to know God's will. Now, Jeremiah 29 says, we all need to know the will of God for our lives, and there is a perfect will for every one of us. The prophet Jeremiah said, made it plain for all of us. He said this, I know the plan I have for you. So God has a plan for you. I know the plan I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good, not for disaster or evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11, you're living. So God has a future. God has hope. Okay, maybe right now you don't, you got lots of hope right now. I'm going to tell you, one day you're going to feel that you don't have any hope in some area. And you can always, you can go, go back to the scripture and say, there's always hope. With God, there's always hope. There's always a future. There's always tomorrow. Tomorrow. I might not be doing good today, but tomorrow I'm hoping for a better day. I'm expecting this to change for my good for tomorrow. Nothing ever, nothing ever happens in the perfect will of God that will be evil in your life. Nothing happens in the perfect will of God that's going to be evil, destructive, death, for in your life. Here's what, here's what the Ephesians 2.10 says. Paul said this to the, to, to the, to, um, the, the um, church in Ephesus. For we are God's masterpiece, New Living says. We are God's masterpiece. Look at your neighbor. Look at God's masterpiece. Right? See? He has created us and you in Christ. See? You might not be that good looking right now. Okay, but God is doing a construction in your life. You know, some of you say, I'm under construction. <laughs> you mean that's why you smell that bad? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm just joking because, you know, if you didn't watch, I'm sorry this morning. But here's, here's the thing about it, that we're all under construction. But it says in there, God created us in you in Christ Jesus. So we can do, so he, he's creating, recreated you so that you can do good things he has planned for you a long time ago. So God had a plan. Did he have a plan? Yes, he got a plan. According to the scripture, God had a plan. He's got a plan for you. So don't give up. I mean, your life might have been in a bad shape, but don't you give up. Don't give up on it. Hi, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the program today. You know, the most important thing in life today is that we know that our salvation rests on Jesus Christ alone. So wherever you are, I want to invite you today to say a simple prayer. The scripture I want to read is found here in John um, 3.16. says that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so Romans 3 and verse 22 says, We're, we are made right with God by, by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. So I want you to believe this scripture, a very simple uh, fact of faith, and that is to put our trust in Jesus Christ, rely on him and trust him for your salvation because he's the one who went to the cross for you and died for you and took your place and penalty. And so if you put your faith in that, that's the way God had set it up, that he would die for us so that we would not perish. 
So if you would all pray this prayer wherever you are, take a few moments right now with me and answer the call of salvation because God is calling you. Say, so, dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died on the cross, suffered my pains and agony, and he died for my sins. I believe the third day he rose from the dead. And now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. I trust him today as my Lord and Savior. I confess him to be my God and my Lord. And thank you, Father, that my sins are washed away. I am now your child. I thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that simple prayer, you are now born again, you are his child. Write to us, let us know who you are because we want to help you, we'll continue to pray for you. Join us every week on this program and this channel and you can catch us live on our live stream or even you can catch us on Facebook and you can find us on YouTube and watch previous programs. So thank you again for watching the program. We love you and we're believing the best for you. See you until next time. Bye-bye. Spirit Alive is taped locally at Faith City Church, 360 Black Bay Road, right here in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Pastor Roma invites you to come out and experience an exciting service in person, Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m., Wednesday at 7 p.m. Hi, everyone. This is Roma Fisher, pastor of Faith City Church. We're hosting again our annual faith conference, September 19th to the 23rd. Don't miss this exciting event. Come enjoy some awesome time in the Word powerful teachings from our guests, fun time together as we gather together from across this nation and across Canada. Meetings will start Wednesday night 7 p.m. continue on until Sunday night. All meetings will be held at Faith City Church, 360 Black Bay Road. Registration is free. For more information, go to faithcitychurch.ca or call our office. You can catch us on Facebook. Faith Life Bible School in Thunder Bay is now accepting applications for the 2018-2019 school year. Come and build a strong foundation in the Word and be equipped for ministry. Faith Life Bible School is affordable and accessible. Come and study, grow, and serve with us. Contact 807-344-1956 or flbs.ca for more info.